In the 19th century, non-Muslims in Iran had an ambiguous status. On the one hand, they were discriminated. All sorts of prohibitions were enacted against them. Uh, in some cities in the early 19th century, it was impossible for a uh, non-Muslim to go out into the street uh, when it rained, because the idea was that uh, the impure najes uh, body of the uh, non-Muslim would pollute the water, and uh, that water that had touched his body would then seep into a Muslim house and render that impure. So all sorts of terrible discriminations were enacted. M many of these were at least formally abolished in the 19th century, again in an attempt to seem quote-unquote civilized in the eyes of Europeans, because after all, equal treatment of all citizens is part of a civilized state. Now, with the constitution of 1906, this changes. The power of the Shah is reduced. Uh, the uh, status of the, of the non-Muslims is enhanced. They become citizens, but not first-class citizens. They become, in a sense, second-class citizens, because given that Twelve Shiism is the official religion of the state, uh, there are certain, there's a glass ceiling for how far a non-Muslim can rise uh, in the Iranian state. However, there's no doubt that after 1906, the social status of non-Muslims in Iran uh, improves. One shortcoming of this is that the constitution and the laws of the country recognize only three groups as um, so-called recognized minorities, namely the Zoroastrians, the Jews, and the Christians. And there are, of course, Iranians who are neither of these and yet who are not Muslims, uh, most importantly the Baha'is. Uh, but there were also small groups of Sikhs in Iran, for instance. In the Kurdish areas, uh, there are adherents of a religion that is now known as the Arasan.